Welcome back, everybody, to the Wingspan Invitational Knockout Games. That's what it's called. I had to read it. Yep. <laughs> uh, if you haven't been keeping up with us, go watch the last three videos where we explain everything. We explain who we are. We explain our methodology, what we're doing here. We're basically running a March Madness style bracket with all these different birds from Wingspan, some of our favorite birds. In general, we tried to pick just one bird from each like category of birds, although I'm kind of realizing we failed at that with like this Eurasian collared dove and some of the things from last round. Um, oh well. But <laughs> still, we did our best to get a nice variety, so we didn't just pick the most powerful things, because there are a lot of powerful birds that are similar. Um, but anyway, we're going to get right into it. We're doing head-to-head -head matchups. If we disagree, we go to a tiebreaker, which is one of our parents. Uh, and did I miss anything? <laughs> I think you covered it pretty well. If you want to play along, check the description. Yeah, there's a bracket. We created an online bracket format um, that you can go in. Obviously, and... if you're watching this now, you already see a bunch of our answers filled out. But so you still, just start at the first video. Along. Yeah, just start at the back. first don't, video. Don't fill out your bracket. See if you have the same ideas that we have, or maybe you disagree with us. Um, we even disagree with each other on some of these picks. Yes. So um, there's definitely no right or wrong answers. These are all really good birds. Um, well, and... there are some right and wrong answers, I gotta be honest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, some, but yes. The ones we disagree on, I don't feel like either of us was right or wrong. I think I could see it both ways Yeah, most of them. All right. So anyways, let's jump into this first matchup here, and we've got the Carry On Crow matching up against the um, Eurasian Collared Dove. And by the way, this is a random category. The birds that were selected here are from any bird in the game. Um, you got brown, you got white, you got pink, you got yellow, you got blue powers. Yeah. So it could be anything. Again, we randomly drew all these. These are not seated. They're not like yeah. one verse 16. They're not quite uh, seated in the same way that the March Madness would be seated. These are just randomly selected. So you may have a one versus a one seed. You may have a 16 versus a 16. Who knows? Um, we're just going off of what we drew. So we got in this first round, Carrion Crow, the Eurasian Collared Dove. And the Carrion Crow will start over here. Um, an interesting bird. It, it it allows you to choose one other player's board, and you look at their board, and you say, how many, what do they call this type of power officially? I don't know, I don't know what they call it officially, but I call it carnivore. <laughs> yeah, carnivore, or like death power, yeah, eating power. I don't think it has a name officially. It's just referred to by the symbol. Everywhere. Yeah, the skull and crossbones symbol. For each one of the birds on their board, it could be your own board as well, that has this skull or crossbone power, you get to catch a rat at the end of the round. So um, what I've found with this bird is usually you're getting what? Two to three yeah. cached rats at the end of each round. Which is a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. No, don't get me wrong. You play this in the first round, it's probably turning into a 12 to 14 point bird. Yeah. Um, and, and, and the thing is, you can build around it. You can build your own strategy. True. Those yeah. birds tend to be pretty good. Uh, and they fit into a lot of different strategies. So, like, if you get this bird early, you can totally build around it and get it up to, like, five. Definitely. Um, yeah, so... Um, yeah, this is like a case-dependent bird. I think it, it has its place. It has its um, yeah. time and time and place. And it's not a hard food cost to get. It, it can live in the bottom or the middle row. Um, I'm usually trying to throw middle. it into the middle row. Yeah. Um, I, I, we've discussed this in the past videos that we think the middle row is the weakest of the rows. So you want to throw these birds with no um, powers that you want to be using into your middle yeah. row. And this so. is an Oceania in particular. Oceania, it's probably course. the strongest row in the base game. Right. Uh, but... Yeah, I think Carrion Crow, I really like this bird. It's one of the most fun birds for me because you get to build around it. Yeah, uh, it has its time and place, and, and it's definitely a good bird. You get to sing, Carry hey on my wayward crow. Yeah, I don't know the rest of the song either. either. Okay, okay cool. Uh, yeah, versus Eurasian the Eurasian collar dove. Eurasian no, call. No, no, okay. No, okay. No, it doesn't work. No, okay. This is a bird at the end of the round. You discard up to five of any food from your supply for each you tuck a card from the deck behind this bird. Um, this is very similar to what we discussed in the last video, which is the common starling. It's worth two more points than that, and it can only live in your middle row. Um, it's good. It is a good bird. Um, and the main wrong. thing about it, like we said with the common starling, it can cash, uh, or not cash, but it can put nectar into yeah, your, your middle, row. middle row. So you're probably, if you have this bird, you're probably winning the nectar in the middle row as well, which is another five points. So I think this bird takes it for me. Um, yeah, it's... I, I hate, like the carrion crow, but I think this bird is just too good. I I hate to do this to my wayward son like that, yeah. but the thing is, if you build around carrion crow, it's better, I think. 
you really got to build around it, I, though. I think it's possible to do that. And I, is, I've seen Carrion Crow be, like, an 18 or 19-point bird. Sure, but this bird... Is that possible? Yeah, that's possible. Okay, <laughs> I'm glad I said something that's possible to do. Uh, <laughs> I have seen that. Okay. Yeah, but uh, this, this bird is much easier to get up to that point yeah. value. And the nectar the nectar ability just yeah. pushes it way over the top. I agree. Um, I agree. Uh, I I just I hate doing that to get the carrion crow out. You want to sing it one more time? Carry on my wayward crow. All right, so, we'll see you later, carrion. Uh, for anyone who's still watching, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got our next you matchup here. Oh on. right, okay. Geez, you explain the matchup. Yeah, so our next matchup, um, an interesting one. I think it's kind of lopsided, to be honest with you. But we'll see if Andrew feels the same way. We've got the wood duck versus the Eurasian nuthatch. And the wood duck is the first time we're going to touch on a card drawing bird in the top row. I can't believe, like, it, this is just randomly how it ended up. That is such an important ability to have in your top row. It that is, is game changing. It's game changing, and it lets you draw two cards and you discard one at the end of your turn. So, but the biggest thing about this is that seems like a, a kind of a block. Yeah, it's like, what is that? Like, That's, it's just like any duck? Yeah. Uh, but the thing that's different that makes the wood duck different than the other ducks, it can live in the top row. Yes. So it makes it so that you can be getting food, and then you can be getting cards, and you have that food yeah. now to play the cards you just got. Yeah, and plus, you get to see two cards every time. That's like good card... Like, if we were just playing base wingspan... That's and, good, like, yeah. Like, I spend, like, half my game just trying to get to the ability to see two cards per turn. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so I played this in the base game, and I, I love this bird. It's one of my favorite birds in the game. Yes. Um, that's why I said I don't think it's much of a contest. Despite but let, it being up against a good bird. It's a good bird, yeah. Let's talk about that bird for just a second. Yeah, here. so this is the Eurasian Nuthatch. Uh, it's three points, and every time you activate it, you cash a wheat on here. The thing that makes this different from a lot of other birds that are like this is that at any time, you can spend the wheat that you cashed on here. So... I actually, I think that in uh, Oceania, that doesn't come up as often it as it does in the base it's, game. In the base true. game, this is much stronger because uh, food's at a premium. Yeah, and so the fact true. that you get like very flexible, it's like you can convert it to points if you need it as points, or you can use it to you know, accelerate you if you need to. Uh, I think that's much more valuable in the base game. But in Oceania, that's still occasionally useful. Mostly this is yeah. just like you get a point in your top row. Oh, it's a good Which bird. is good. It's a good bird. Yeah. It's just no competition against the wood duck. Getting that card draw in your top row, there's so few birds that get you that card draw in your top row that this bird is just, it's a, it's elite, and it, yes. it goes over the top for me. So And, and, that's, and that's a bird that I've underrated for so long and just recently started seeing the light, and it's a, it's like immediately, like, it's a yeah. top-tier bird, but never pass it up if I can take it, unless I'm like, unless I have like a mute spawn or something that's already committing right. me to another right. strategy. So yeah, wood duck definitely moving on to... The uh, birdie two. Yeah, although now that I think about it, it actually works a little bit with the mute swan. If you yeah, have, if you're getting you're getting that draw card draw back yeah. for sure. Um, all right, we're gonna go on to the next matchup here, and we've actually got another card drawing bird for the top row. Yes, it's, it's a little bit weaker than the than the wood duck. Willy but, Wagtail. Yes, <laughs> we got Willy Wagtail. Willy Wagtail. No, he won't. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Willy Wagtail is a. A uh, flexible bird can be played anywhere, but really you want to be playing him in the top row. Yes. Um, and what he does is he resets, or or he has the option to reset the the tray of bird cards. And what you can then do is, if there's a star nest or a bull nest bird there, you can draw that bird into your hand. So a little bit weaker card draw because you do have to have I, that bull or star nest I think nest a little there. bit is an understatement. It's much it's much Yeah, card okay, draw. much worse card draw than a wood duck yes. that's just drawing two of any card that's, you want. And that's for a lot of reasons, actually. It's not just that you're, um, you're limited to only bull nests. It's also that bull nest birds aren't worth as many points typically as the other birds. Hmm. I haven't um, noticed that before, but I, I believe you I, when it, you say that. But... If you think about it, like a lot of your biggest birds are in your water row. Yeah, I guess that's um, rafter nests. Yeah, or, those or are mostly ground nests ground and, and rafter nests. And rafter nests yeah. um, platform nests. Platform, okay. Um, and the bull nests, the only big point ones you have are just like the warblers and stuff, but those often go yeah, in your top row. Those are great, yeah, that's true. They don't have any, they don't give you bonus cards, they only go in your top row, which is where you want to be building around anyway, so you don't really have room for them. That's fair. Um, so so I, th I still think Willy Wagtail is oh, yeah, a good no, card. I any um, card draw in your top row is and, good. Yeah, like what even what access do you even have to card draw in your top row? You've got Wood Duck, Willy Wagtail, and I think tuck, that's and, it. tuck and tuck draw and draw is, birds, but yeah, kind of counts, and we'll talk about that later. Yeah, but yeah. So I think any access to card draw is better than none. 
And so that makes Wooly Wagtail actually really strong, like despite it's strong, yeah, for yeah, sure. despite it being a lot less powerful than the Wood Duck, it's still really quite good. Plus the alliteration. I mean, you get to say Wooly Wagtail like twenty five times yeah. a game. So yeah, it's it's very it's good. it's great. Anyways, the Plains uh, Wanderer, Plains Wanderer is another bird. I also love the Plains Wanderer name. I don't know. It sounds like Luke Skywalker to me or something. <laughs> it does sound like you should be in a Star Wars movie, or something um, like that. But yeah, the Plains Wanderer is a middle row only bird. And when you play it, you draw a bonus card for each other bird. Sorry, not for each other bird, just for each bird in your middle row. So it's at least one, most likely going to be two or three. You keep one and discard the rest. Yeah, I, um, I just because you're not playing in the middle row that much or trying not to, I feel like that bird gets a well, little bit weaker. You're I know you're playing birds there, but you are dumping a lot of birds. You can dump birds there, yeah. Uh, but still, only a four point bird. It's four points. <clears throat> I basically count this as. Pretty similar to any other, like, four points, draw yeah, two bonus cards. I'd say about eight. I'd say it's about an eight. Yeah, bird. which is fine. It's, fine. it's a fine it's, bird. It's fine. I think Willy um, Wagtail I, beats I it. I would also take Willy Wagtail. Just because Willy Wagtail does something very unique that you wouldn't, yeah. like... You give me that card draw, I'm going to take yeah. that card draw every time. So I think we're in agreement here. We're going to actually put Willy Wagtail. Yes, yes he, he will. will. Go under the round of... 32. 32. 32. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously, the Plains Wanderer is much better late game. Yeah, but... I'll take these cards and introduce oh, it. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm still stuck on the other side yeah. of the board where I don't have to write stuff. <laughs> uh, we've got an interesting matchup here. We've got Northern Mockingbird versus Abbott's Booby. That's a fun one to say. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Um, yeah, we got Northern Mockingbird versus Abbott's Booby. Um, the Northern Mockingbird, I think, is a really strong bird. It allows you to mirror... I think it's a really strong bird. Oh, are you mocking me? <laughs> oh, are you mocking me? 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 Northern Mockingbird. Northern Mockingbird. <laughs> this is going to get a little quick. Uh, we got the, going to get a little quick. We got the Northern Mockingbird who um, repeats a brown power in whatever row you play him in. And he goes in every single row. So he's actually a really strong bird. And I can't talk with you over there. <laughs> you explain the freaking All right, bird. the Northern Mockingbird. At first glance, this bird does nothing on its own, obviously. But the thing is, good bird abilities are kind of hard to come by in this game. You usually end up with one, though. Yeah, so... The Northern Mockingbird. Now you end up with two. And not only do you end up in two, most of the good abilities in this game... Are brown. Yeah, well, uh, that's not what I was going to say. But what I was going to say is that most of the good abilities in this game compound with themselves um the only one that doesn't like this bird with like a raven is good but i wouldn't say it's like twice as good as a raven on its own that's fair but i still think it might be good with it's a still raven. good with yeah. a raven but i think that it most for most of the other birds in the game um they combo really well with themselves some of the birds that it doesn't quite go with is like a main duck uh because you run out of cards it doesn't yeah. go with a common chip chaff, chaff, chaff and, which we'll chaff, talk about yeah. later um, but a lot of the other birds, it just... And I'll tell you, this pounds. This is the bird that allowed me to pair... I paired it with a mute swan, yeah. and I tucked 118 cards in one game. So, yeah. I mean, it, it has game-breaking ability, which I always like to see in a card. Yeah, so the thing is, the, the really, like, broken strategies, a lot of them employ this card because, like, you might be able to get one mute swan. You can't get two, You though. can't get two unless you, unless have, you have a this. mocking bird. Exactly. So... Yeah, and, and Mute Swan is just, that's one example of a bird that is, like, the way it's kind of balanced is that you can only have one of it. Adding the second one <laughs> breaks it breaks, completely. Breaks it, yeah. yeah. So, um, definitely, uh, Northern Mockingbird can be a, a game-changing great bird. Um, over here, we've got Abbott's Booby. Um, just draw three bonus cards, discard two, um, and, and these bonus cards could be ones that you, you could discard ones that you already had. So, you could get rid of some of the ones that uh, you don't necessarily need. So, it is a good... Bonus card drawer. Uh, it doesn't do much more than that. You have to play it in your middle row. It's it's similar to the uh, Kiwi. Kiwi. I'd say it's more similar to the Kiwi, where it's getting rid of possibly an old bonus card you don't like. But it's even better because you, you don't have, have to choice. start with it that yeah. you don't like. So I think it's better than a Kiwi, which is actually our final list up there, so that's saying a lot. I don't know um, if it's better than a Kiwi. Uh, to be honest with you, I might take the Kiwi over this. But... Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, it's very similar, I think, at least. They're, they're similar for sure, but I don't think it beats a Mockingbird. No. Um, I don't even think it's close. I think this Mockingbird blows yeah. it away. Yeah, and Mockingbird is also, like, you can hold on to it until you get something good, but it's also fine if you just have something that's okay. Like, yeah. Like, if you have another bird that tucks and draws, or you have another bird that caches of food... The Mockingbird's going to be fine until you hit that combo piece. And if you never hit the combo piece, it's still, still doing okay. fine stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. still a, a very good bird. Um, and it's interesting to point out that we put the 
the Mockingbird in instead of the Catbird, which has the same ability. Just, I think that the yeah. food cost in this case is is one less berry, which berries are hard to get. I want to get that Mockingbird into play as soon as I can, paired with my other bird. So I think that even though it's less points, I want to get that Mockingbird into play yeah. quicker. I think um, it's a difficult argument. I could see the argument for Catbird in Oceania. I think, I think Mockingbird similar. in base game easily beats Catbird, but... They're similar in, in Oceania. They're very similar. I think um, you could... So we put in the yeah, Mockingbird. They're interchangeable, more or less. Did you put them up there? Nope. I'm bad at this. <laughs> Ah, hey! Guess who we have? Hey! Hey! Griffin we got... Vulture! No, oh, no, not Griffin no. Vulture. No, we, we do have the Griffin Vulture but coming up. we also up. got Bonelli's Eagle! Yeah, that's right, we got Bonelli's Eagle! We got part of the Mafia crew coming up here. Um, hey, it's Bonelli's Eagle. And Bonelli's Eagle is um, definitely a very strong bird um, for a, a couple reasons. Bonelli's Eagle is interesting because you can either pay the rat cost of it, and you can just play the bird paying the rat cost, you get the eight points, you can play it in any area, or you can do the more commonly done strategy, which is you can tuck a card for every rat in there, or you could tuck two two cards and pay a rat, um, but you, can, you have the option of not paying food for this and instead tucking cards and turning this into an 11 point bird uh, with an easy food cost. Yeah, so I wanna expand on why it's an easy food cost, because this isn't something that's obvious to uh, like a new player to the game. If you, if you look at the structure of the board, your top row, you can get two food. Like, let's say you play one bird in each row, your top and bottom. And the top and bottom row are pretty symmetrical. Um, if you've played one bird in the top row, you're now getting two food on each draw. Rats aren't going to come up that often. Um, whereas every card you draw is a food that will work for this. Well, it is fair to say that the nectar does work for this. Nectar card does well. work, yes. But the point is, not every food works for it, whereas every card does, and you get the same number of food and the same number of cards. So paying cards is just strictly easier than rats. No, for sure. Um, yeah, I think plus and you're getting and then a you point. get points. Yeah, you're getting right. points. So for I, I think I think it's really hard to justify ever paying rats when you have cards. No, definitely. Like, definitely. If you have the cards, you just do it. The only time you want to pay the rats is if, like, you're at the end of the game, you don't have enough cards or something. Yeah. And even then, sure. you tuck as many as cards as you can. Um, and Benelli's Eagle, really, after that point, it just becomes a uh, a white card, whereas it's it's just yeah. max 11 points. It does go with your carry-on, my way to the crow. <laughs> it does go on with, with that. We do not need to sing again. <laughs> um, but let's talk about the Griffin Vulture, who is kind of like a carry-on. Hey, carry-on! No, okay. Uh, it's Griffin Vulture. Um, this is just like a Carrion Crow, same ability. It caches a rat at the end of each round. You choose somebody uh, for every carnivore they have. You cache a rat. And the difference between this and a Carrion Crow, it's worth two less points. It costs two less food, uh, so it, which is a pretty good deal. Um, yeah, no, it's not. It's a, it's a good bird, and, and I, I enjoy playing it. I don't think we're going to get it to beat Benelli's Eagle here. In most cases, yeah, Benelli's think... Eagle is going to beat it. I, yeah, Benelli's Eagle is just a lot more flexible. Um, you're going to want to play Benelli's Eagle at any stage of the game. At the very start of the game, maybe Griffin Vulture. I would take Griffin Vulture over Benelli's sure, Eagle. Sure, but that's a very specific point. But, and I think flexibility-wise, yeah. you're going to go with Benelli's Eagle most of the yeah, time. Yeah, and so. it's not like you're ever really choosing between them. Yeah, so, so yes, I, I agree I'm Benelli's taking Benelli's Eagle. Eagle. And you are as well. And you've got to write that down again. Hey! <laughs> oh, this is, this, is, this is a matchup here. Um, we've got... Probably the strongest white power bird. Um, well, maybe, I don't know. But it's a strong white power bird in the Atlantic Puffin um, against a strong brown powered bird in the greater Flamingo. Um, so I'll quickly explain the great, the Atlantic Puffin. I think it's easy to explain, but it, it does take some discussion afterwards. Um, takes three fish to play, so kind of a tougher food cost, but really in Oceania, not worrying too much about food cost. Um, Eight point baseline is great. Yeah. Just eight points right there off the bat. Boom. Everything else great. is upside. Yeah. So I'd be playing this bird possibly even if it didn't have a power at the bottom of it. But I do get this power at the bottom. I get to draw two new bonus cards too. I mean, that's a minimum probably four more points. Yeah, we've been counting that as roughly like four points in, yeah, in so our calculation. This is, becomes a 12 to 15, 16 point bird. Yeah, it's like 16 max. Reasonably. Yeah, 16 probably max. Um... And it has a star nest, so yeah. another bonus there. Um, that's been relevant in many of the games that I've played it. Yeah, definitely. So this is a really, really strong white-powered bird, for sure. Um, but going on to the Greater Flamingo, 
There's another interesting discussion. Yeah, so Great Flamingo, uh, it's fairly difficult food cost. Um, three, three foods. Three points, and when you activate it, you choose another player. For each cube in their bottom row, you get to tuck a card from your hand, and then you get to draw that many cards. So, when you first read this, this seems just amazing. It's like, you could, te you, like... If you and like if somebody else somehow somehow also had a greater flamingo, you just spend the round going back. But how about and if somebody has a muse swan? Right. Yeah. yeah. No, but I'm saying like if if you like if there was a way for two people to get the greater flamingo, yeah. you just go back and forth one one two two. Right. 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 Uh, but yeah. Um, but yeah. So I'd say at worst, most of the time, you can expect this to be tuck one draw one. Yeah. Which is a good bird. Good baseline. Right there. Good baseline. And then the rest, it just grows in power from there. Um, I had a game where I was tucking three, drawing three. Yeah, um, fairly regularly. And I had a Mockingbird with it, so yes. I was tucking six cards a turn and getting six cards yeah. back. I managed to tuck like 80 cards with this Flamingo, yeah. so that, it's that's a strong That's a fairly bird. rare case, it, That is a rare it's, case, definitely. Because I th the one thing I will say about the bottom row strategy is there's a low... I think the selection of birds to go into it is a little bit lower than the top row strategy. Sure, sure. Uh, and that means that if you have this bird, you're likely to be the only person going for the bottom row strategy. Yeah, um, definitely. But but people still have to draw but cards. people still have to play So there. you're still so getting one or two plays. Yeah, there. so I think it's most of the time it's going to be one or two yeah, on this. definitely. Um, Which still makes it a vi viable argument against the Atlantic yeah, Falcon, I think. Yeah, yeah. If you, and if you and somebody else both somehow got good bottom rows, this is going to allow you to beat them. Yes. But that's, it's like it's going to be their best strategy, but they're going to like make you beat them in the process. So, right. Um, yeah, so this, this bird just, like, like, it beats a mute swan, which is, it's, It doesn't like, beat a, it doesn't, I wouldn't say it, like, necessarily would beat a mute swan in our matchup, like, I'm not making that claim, but I think that if you have this and your opponent has a mute swan, you might, oh, okay. you have a, you, like, yes. you win that direct battle, I yeah, think. Yeah, the direct battle, because you're redrawing cards, absolutely. Right. yeah. Um, but... That's a very niche Right, no, yeah, that's scenario. very niche. So I think, in ge on the whole, it's a lot worse than Mute Swan, I think. Uh, I would agree with that, but is it better than the Atlantic I, Coffin? I don't even remember, like, what I came up with in my bracket preparing for this. I think these birds are so close. I think I chose Puffin, and that might be my bias. Like, like we've been discussing, I play bottom row strategies a little bit less than you do. The more I'm, um, I'm thinking about this, I, I'm... The more this discussion, I think... The greater flamingo, I gotta go with it. All right, are you going with the Atlantic? Uh, so here's the thing: if we call on our tiebreaker, we know it's gonna pick the puppet. Uh, Do we? I feel he's, our tiebreaker is mom. Oh, it's mom. I thought side. it was. I was thinking it was dad. Yeah. The, the white power. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't say he's the white power guy. No, no, that sounds wrong. Not not. Uh, not, <laughs> not, not, not <laughs> um, no. Uh, oh man. I think what's so strong about this is you're redrawing the same amount so, of cards. So if I can get a tough two, draw two, you know how good that bird would yeah, be? Yeah, but I think I think I have to go with the Puffin, and here's my reasoning. The Flamingo works in one strategy. The Puffin, I guess, also... It, it works but, in more strategies. It works, it works in the top row only, and it also works in like the hybrid strategy, whereas this is like... If you get this bird, you have to be full bottom row, otherwise. Well, you sure, but you could make the same argument for a mute swan or a. a yeah, but I feel like those pull you into power. it more. They're more powerful. They pull you into sure, it more. Sure. Yeah. I. Yeah. I agree. These aren't as powerful as those birds. I would. Still, yeah. I'm still gonna go with it. I'm gonna um, go with puffin. Are we gonna go with? Okay, then we yeah. need a tiebreaker. So let's bring in mom to settle <laughs> this score. Let's bring in mom. <laughs> Should be interesting. Hi, mom. <laughs> Hello again. This is our tiebreaker, our mom. You're, this is the first time you're appearing in this video, so we had to reintroduce you. Okay. Anyway, here's your birds. As usual, I'm not going to say anything about them. You have to tell me which one you prefer. All right. I prefer the puffin. Why? I like them. They're very cute. <laughs> it's, 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 okay. What's the gameplay reason that you I like? The I, I the like. The um, bonus cards, I do like those even though they do fail if you just draw them. I like the star. Yeah, the star nest. I like the star and I like that. I don't like the fact that they cost three fish, but... What, what about the flamingo, it's, though? It's the flamingo... Okay, I see where you're going with this. You know how I don't like concentrating <laughs> on talking cards too much. <laughs> Well, choose one other player for each action. It depends on the game. It does. Yes. That's true. It depends on the game. 
I still prefer the All puppet. right, just wanted to make sure you're giving it a fair shot. I also prefer the puppet. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. But I, I do. That's my fair shot. And all it's right. Worth eight I'll points. take it. He's Jake, good. how many of you good. want now? <laughs> do you still only have one? Yeah. I think I'm, I'm one. I'm, right. I've got seven to Jake's one or something. Ties broken in my favor. So what can I say? I'm just good. Okay. I'm getting new judges. All right. Andrew wins again. What does that make me? One in seven? Yeah, one for eight. One out of eight. I don't know how math works. Something like that. Let's move on. I'm winning. That's All the right. point. Um, our next matchup, um, two interesting birds, but I don't think this is much of a matchup. We've got um, Superb Liar Bird on one hand, and we got the uh, common Chip Jeff Cheerio. Right, and you can say that, so it wins, right? Yeah. All right, end of round. End of round, okay. No, uh, no. <laughs> let's discuss the birds. Um, <clears throat> common Chip Jeff allows you to tuck one to five birds behind... Um, each bird in the habitat pretty much um, and it can live in the water or in the top row But really if you have this bird you better be playing it in the bottom row if you really want to maximize yeah. its value I guess it could technically work in the top row if you have a wood duck first that way you draw two cards You tuck those and then you don't have to discard anything. I guess but Really come on if you put a little playing... wagtail in front of it too you No, you're playing it in the in the play... bottom row yes. and it's super it's a super powerful bird yeah. if you play it in the bottom row you get to the end of your bottom row and you're drawing four cards every turn you're tucking those four cards yeah it turns the four cards that you draw just from being at the end of the row into four points, four points. So this is yeah. a, this, this is a four point per turn bird and there's a good chance you could have a draw to discard one bird in your bottom row or some other bird that draws yeah. you cards so really this can, you can maximize the full five points on this bird yeah uh, without much difficulty and it's three point baseline, which isn't too bad for this type of bird. Yeah. Um, and a pretty easy food cost. So, but yeah, yeah. If this bird is in your uh, game and you build around it, this bird will get you like fifty points. A uh, minimum. More. Yeah. yeah, for sure. If you have it right at the start of the game, um, you still can treat it as like a tuck bird, just tucking a card behind it. I mean, yeah, you don't I, really want to do it. I think it's bad until you've got the row. No, up. yeah, for sure. You don't really um, want to do it, but it, it's still an option there. So yeah, it's a good bird, really, really strong bird, I think. Um, and I don't think it's much competition with the super no, liar bird, but, but it is an, it the is super an liar bird is super interesting. I love this bird. Um, it's only lives in your forest. It's a star nest, only one egg space, five points, copy a brown power of one bird in the forest of the player to your right. So this only works if the person to your right has a good bird in their top row. If they're going for a full like forest strategy, then this bird's really good. It's just like a flex more flexible version of the best thing they have. Um, so for instance, I had a game, I didn't actually use this, I used a bird. What, same I forget, power. I forget what same the other power. bird is, but it copies the power to your left. Basically the same. Um, I used it to copy uh, alternating basically between a bird that just cash a wheat for a point so that it got me a bunch of points and then at some point Jake was sitting on my left and at some point he picked up Biff which is you can see like our first video that we made in the series to see our discussion of Biff the black-headed woodpecker black-headed yes that is correct. Uh, just the black, the black woodpecker, woodpecker yeah. uh, the black woodpecker um, and so after that point I was able to pivot to using it for that ability because I needed a little bit of extra food to play the cards I had uh, I think I also have like a wood duck, so that was a pretty broken game for me. But yeah. so this bird is um, like situationally good. Yeah, it's it's um, so flexible, and it gives you basically if the player on your right is doing the top row strategy, they probably have some good. They have a good reason yeah. to be in that strategy, right? And so you can just copy their reason, and now you have a good reason to be in it as well. For sure, yeah. So it's a good bird. It's uh, no competition against the chip chaff though. Yep. Um, chip chaff moves on to the uh, birdie two, the round of birdie two. I forgot we called it that. Uh, you also forgot to write down the I'm bad at this game. And by game, I mean the bracket about the game. All right, let's move on to our next matchup here. And we've got the Great Tit versus the Violet Green Swallow, or as we like to call him, the Violent Green Swallow. He gets a little aggressive. Um, and they're two interesting birds, uh, two powers we really haven't talked about. Um, yet in any of our other birds. So the Great Tit allows you to reset the bird feeder and gain any one food from there. So um, if this is one of your initial birds, I love to play this as one of my initial birds in the forest, and it just gains you that extra food. It really kind of sets you up really nicely to be able to play a lot of birds that game. Yeah, I think in terms of like accelerating just on food alone, the Great Tit's your best bird for that. Now. Accelerating you can't actually just do on food alone, so I'd say a wood duck or anything that lays eggs oh, yeah, is actually sure. better. But in terms of like food gathering power, this is so good because you reset the bird feeder, which allows you to most likely get a nectar out of it. Whereas yeah. the other birds that just like 
but it's an easy comparison to the American Red Start, which just gets you a food from the feeder. Which is still or, a good bird. Which is um, still a really good bird, but this is just that, but better. Yeah. I think. Um, and then we got the Violent Green Swallow over here. Um, he can live in any row. Um, I like to put him in either the bottom row or the top row. Um, and he's a tuck and draw bird, which means you tuck a card from your hand, you draw another card. Um, this is a good way to filter your hand. It's a good way to get some points. If it's in the bottom row, you're probably going to be able to tuck and draw every time. If it's in the top row, it gets a little trickier because you might not have those cards to support right. this. But range. in the top row, I think that if you get to the point where you don't have cards you want to give to it, it's kind of done its job already. Because it's filtered your yeah, cards to the out. Ones. But then, so, you, then you're kind of just taking up a spot in your top row, and you, you yeah, no longer have that top row strategy. I call so. it I call it like pseudo card draw in your top row because it it you it lets you like play once in your bottom row, and then you just filter your cards until they're the things you want. So it makes it so that your bottom row plays are more effective and gets you some points along the way. So I actually I think it works better in a top row. I think in your bottom row you want to be. You'll take it, obviously. You'll just put it in there. Like it's a point. Yeah. You yeah. Don't, you you yeah. You probably don't have time to waste going for better things unless they're readily available. But I personally prefer it in top row strategies because it gets you some points. But the card filtering is so important for the top row. Uh, whereas the bottom row, there are better options than one point. Like the bush did is two points. There's a lot of yeah. No, I like I that. I'd agree with that. Um, I think overall it's a pretty. It's a a little bit above average bird. Yeah. Um, it's versus it's nothing no. super special, but. But it is a good bird to have and a good bird to use in a lot of your strategies. Yep. So where are you landing on this? You want the great tit or you want the uh, uh, violent green swallow? I think I'm on the violent green swallow. Just because I, I think I value that card draw in the top row. Even though it's not real draw, It's I, I value the filtering more than you do, I think. I honestly don't have a strong opinion one way or the <laughs> other. Um, I'm okay with the violent green swallow moving on. So I'm going to give it to him. I'm not even sure who I picked, but... I, I can see it going either way. Um, I mean, the one the one thing I'll say about the great tip that we didn't mention is that if you put this in your top row as your only bird, and then you go for more of a hybrid strategy, yeah, it makes it, it so you get three food out of your top sure. row in just one play, which is actually quite good for a hybrid strategy. It's You don't need more food in the food strategy, but for a hybrid, this is much better. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, I'm, I'm fine with the Violent Green okay. Swallow moving on, though, so let's uh, put him on to the next round. All right. And I will find the birds, because now we are on to the birdie two, the round of birdie two, and we will see who moves on to the sweet 16, which we never came up with a name for. But we've got the Eurasian colored dove versus the wood duck, the sweet six turn. Oh boy, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so we've already hit these. We've, we talked pretty in depth about each one of these in the round of 64, so uh, in the round of birdie two, we're going to go a little bit more quickly through them. But um, the wood duck, we already know how much we love this wood yeah. duck. Uh, we really, really value this wood duck. And even though this... The Eurasian colored dove is good. The wood duck is, like, one of yeah. the top this, birds. This card will, like, look like it gets you more points throughout the game. But really, this wood duck is drawing you into those good cards yeah. that you can then play. And the fact that it's in your top row is just... Um, Puts it yeah. way above the the um, Eurasian color. The wood duck also enables better top rows. Um, for instance, it enables you to put like a bush tit in your top row or a grackle, um, or that violent green swallow yeah, even. Right, uh, gives you that tuck and draw ability. Yeah, if you're there. filtering the cards you get off this, it's even better. So yeah, uh, the wood duck on its own gets you great cards, and it also makes you better, like allows you to put better stuff in your top row. Yeah. So I think no question it's the wood duck. Here. Yeah, we're in uh, agreement there. We're gonna both go with the wood duck onto the sweet 16. All right, we've got Willy Wagtail. I Maybe. know. <laughs> um, against the Northern Mockingbird. Um, so Willy Wagtail, again, another drawing bird in the top row. He'll draw you a card based on the egg, egg, egg nest or nest. bowl nest. Bowl nest. Just nest. Just bowl or star. Bowl or star nest. <laughs> Whether one of those is in the tray, you'll get to draw one. Um, much weaker card draw than yep. uh, the wood duck. And then you've got Northern Mockingbird over here who just mocks one of the brown powers um, of whatever row he's in. In my opinion... I'd rather have a Northern Mockingbird. I, I think so. It's Willy Wagtail is really good, but it's not. It doesn't like solve the game for you. Yeah, whereas the Mockingbird, Mockingbird can break games. Yeah. Um, Willy Wagtail can't break games. So 
I'm, I think we're both in agreement here. Northern Mockingbird moves on to the Sweet 16. All right, what's our next matchup? We got Benelli's Eagle v... Atlantic Puffin. Atlantic Puffin. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, this is no matchup, in my opinion. I agree there's a clear winner here. Um, and I'm guessing we're both on the side of, and we'll just remind you real quick, Atlantic Puffin, draw two new bonus cards, has a star nest, baseline of eight points. Yeah, they're both baseline of eight points. Both baseline of eight points. is secretly 11 points baseline and ceiling. <laughs> yeah, and in, in a bit of an easier food cost, but again, in um, Oceania, I'm not really worrying about the food cost too mm -hmm. much, so... In my mind, this is easy Atlantic Puffin. I agree. The one thing I'll say, and it's interesting that I'm the one pointing this out because this is usually where we differ, uh, this can be played in the bottom row strategy. Atlantic Puffin doesn't really fit that. Sure. Yeah, that card that card has more flexibility, but this card is just... It's just... I think it's, it's just better it's just more points. points. More points. Yeah. yeah, I'm taking the one with more points. I agree. So I think we're in agreement Atlantic Puffin moves on. I think that at a high level, a lot of wingspan is just like getting the most impact out of every play you make, so... You yeah. just want the higher point bird. Oh, wow, this is going to be a blowout. Uh, we got a common <laughs> shift chaff versus a violet green swallow. Um, the violet green swallow, just it's not a matchup here. Yeah, um, the violet green swallow just wins. Yeah, violet green swallow is going to murder by this uh, chiff chaff. Um, no. I can't. <laughs> I, I forgot how to spell. Wow, that's, that's a puff if. <laughs> <laughs> that statement was so ridiculous, I forgot how to spell. Uh, What's an Atlantic Puffin? The, the Atlantic Puffin's gonna have a capital N at the end. Hey, just like our knockout. <laughs> um, and like a, like a Euro symbol, I think, instead of an F. Um, oh boy! <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, this Violet Green Swallow has no chance here. It's a good bird, it's just the Chiff Chaff is elite. One point per turn, four points per turn. Yeah, and no more needs yeah. to be said. This Chiff Chaff moves on to the next round. Let's go on to um, our. Eagle Elite 8. I'm gonna go and see who gets into the Eagle Elite 8. I mean, we got an interesting matchup here, I think. The Wood Duck versus the Northern Mockingbird is, is interesting. I know you're pretty much on the side of the, probably on the side of the Wood Duck, right? You, yeah. you like the Wood Duck. Um, I think it's closer than you might be thinking it is. Well, it is. My problem is the Wood Duck, like, wins you the game on its own. The Northern Mockingbird wins you the game if you already have another game bird that might win you the game on its own already. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with you that the Wood Duck is strong. I don't think it's a game winner necessarily. I know. Like, I like you play the Wood Duck and you, 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 everybody else might as well forfeit? I don't well, I don't think that's No, the because there's other broken stuff that can happen, but... Right, so you, you can't say that the Wood Duck's automatically winning you games. But it will be the reason you win the game. <laughs> You could say the same thing about a Mockingbird. You could break a game yeah, with a Mockingbird it's, it's, just as easily. It's true. Um, I think that I would rather have the Wood Duck than the Mockingbird, but I, I, don't, I just don't think it's as as distant between them as you're making it out to be. Um, I haven't played that many games where I've had this in my opening hand, but I haven't lost any of them. Yeah, but you've also played like two, so... Um, but, yeah, I, hey! No, it's a good bird, <laughs> and I, I'll agree with you. Yeah, I'll put the Wood Duck on... Uh, I think that card draw in your top row is just super valuable. Um, and the Mockingbird, though, great bird. And I'm trying to pair this with, like, a Mute Swan or, a, yeah. or something that breaks the game like that. All right, we've got one more matchup to do. Common Chiff Chaff versus Atlantic Puffin. Um, we've been over the Puffin, just drawing you two cards there, and it's a um, pretty high baseline of eight points. So you're looking at a 14 to 16 point bird, yeah. probably. Chiff Chaff, though... Tucking four cards like that is it, it adds up real quick. Yeah, adds up real quick. You're gonna beat that sixteen um, in four turns. Four turns. <laughs> yeah. So uh, um, I'm going chip chaff here. I, I, I gotta agree. Okay. Like the only point in the puffin's favor, it's a little bit more flexible, um, in the sense that like chip chaff. I feel like bottom row. There's like bottom row, and then there's like two or three variants of top row other strategies. So Atlantic puffin fits in all of those. Chip chaff only fits in one thing. But the Chiff Chaff is a game plan in and of itself. So. Yeah, Chiff Chaff, you get this at the beginning, you've got your game plan set. So, um, yeah, I think definitely Chiff Chaff moves on here. Yeah, agreed. Now this, I think, is the hardest matchup in the whole tournament. Uh, it's a hard matchup, but I think we might encounter some more difficult ones in the uh, final four and maybe the final. I don't know. Um, I think these might be the top two birds. We'll see. Well, that's the discussion we're about to have, so... <laughs> Uh, we've got Common Chip Chaff versus Wood Duck. I know Andrew's love for the Wood Duck, and I do love the Wood Duck too. I guess I don't love it quite as much as Andrew does, but 
Um, the card draw in your top row, definitely a nice thing to have. Uh, is the owl okay? The owl's okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then you got the Chiff Chaff, who I think the Chiff Chaff is that game breaker that um, if you have them, you know your strategy. And both of these birds are really, if you you, you need to get them at the start of the game. If you so. start the game with either of these, that's like your game plan. If you start the game with both, I guess you're going bottom row I'm going using both. Yeah, using both. But like that doesn't mean that the wood ducks. But I think I chip, chip chaff you can also use later game too. If you get the chip chaff second or third round, it might even be better to get it second or third round. You have yeah. that row developed and then you just set it in there and then it, it's getting you those points right away. I think chip chaff is more oh. flexible. I'm definitely choosing the chip chaff here. I think I I think it wins um, this matchup. But I, I think that if you started the game. If you had to start the game with one or the other, the Wood Duck would beat the Chiff Chaff more often than not. I would take the Chiff Chaff over the Wood Duck, so even at the start of the game. I think it's a clear dire directional strategy for me. Um, the I, Wood Duck is... I, I see the Wood Duck being good, but it, I just don't think it's as good as you're making it out to be. It, it circles through cards, sure. And it's great in the top row. We agree, it's a great bird, but it's still you, you're still playing there, you're getting one card into your hand every time. I mean... Yeah, but that one card is going to be con converted into points, and the more times no, sure. you play there, you're going to be getting good birds. I agree, but I can just put the chip chaff down and get four points every time I play there. Yeah, but my my thinking is you actually end up with a higher uh, like play to point conversion off of playing really strong birds using the wood duck. You got to draw those really strong birds, though. But so I you, think you will. I, you're drawing two cards, and you, so you're you're saying that two cards a lot of times. Two cards. I'm gonna have to draw the the wood duck draws me two cards. I have to beat eight points. I have to get an eight-point bird to match a chip chaff. Uh, yeah, I think you can do that. You're getting an eight-point bird every time? I'd love to have your card draw ability then. No, not, not every time, because some of the time you're just you're also getting points out of your top row. Um, but I'm also getting points out of my bottom row. I, I, I'm assuming I don't just have a chip chaff. But the chip chaff cannibalizes some of your ability to work in the bottom row. Not really. I mean, it doesn't play well with other tucking birds, particularly. You have to get a pretty good bottom row if you really want to make the chip chaff work. I I can see it working with many bottom rows. If you just get one drawing ability in your bottom row, now you're you're pretty well set there. I don't know. I th I think that I think that you have to work a little bit harder to make the chip chaff work in your bottom row than you're making it out to be. And well, I may be overselling. The... I think you're overselling the wood duck. <laughs> um, but I think I still have to go wood duck here. I can't go wood duck here. I think Chip Jaff is the clear winner here. Um, I guess we need a tiebreaker yeah. somehow on this one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got our mom back in here with us, and she's got the uh, most important decision uh, possibly of her life um, coming up here between these two birds. Uh, who are you going to put to the final four between these two birds here? Oh, boy. Okay. Once again, it depends on when these are played. Um, I like the chip chap. I've learned to like him. Um, you just got to do a lot of saving of birds for tucking. Um, and the other one, can we play these together? You could play them together, but you got to choose one. That would be ideal. Could be ideal. Could be a good way to go. Yeah. Well, all right. I like the chip chaff. You're choosing the chip chaff. I'm choosing the chip chaff. The common chip chaff. <laughs> did you did you win or lose this one? I just do because you can get so many points if you if you get in them earlier, and then you can go. So I hope that's a good enough reason for you. I 100% agree. Yeah. Oh. I also chose the chip chaff, my second one. Oh, you're here. lucky. Uh, now I'm two and nine, but I got the most important decision, and you can all remember that. <laughs> my bird moves on to the final four. And um, yeah, so there you have it. The common chip chaff moves on to the final four. So here comes Andrew. Don't go to the end of the video without me. Oh, sorry. Um, I won't carry on. My wayward grow. <laughs> I won't carry on without you. Um, so throw up the uh, chip chap up there. I have to write it. First, the humiliation with defeat. <clears throat> That's right. And then... Um, yes. So the chip chaff, I think, is a, a worthy I, final I four bird. It, it, it's a ton of points, and 
Um, I do like the wood duck. I just don't think it's as powerful as the chiff chaff. Um, and so there you have it. There's our final four. We've got representing the brown powers, our mute swan, definitely a worthy contender. White powers represented by the North Island brown kiwi. Kind of a surprise pick. I actually didn't. Yeah. Think, uh, when, I, when I first looked at it, I don't think I would have guessed that. Um, then down here, European goldfinch, I think a worthy um, person to be representing the yellow, pink, and blue powers. And um, our common shift chaff comes out of the random bracket, which I think was a very strong bracket, um, full, filled with a lot of strong birds in there. So there you have it. That's our final four, and we'll check back in. One more video to go. Let's see who we crown the champion of the flock. Grilch. Grilch. <laughs> common chiff chaff can live in your water or your uh forest why would you ever put it in your oh my god hello i told kitty. you it was gonna be <laughs>